everyone and welcome to this tutorial on how to link Revit structure to AutoCAD structural detailing or as we know it ASD. So here I have a very very simple Revit model it's just a, a simple steel uh, frame as you can see here so we have rafters, some columns, uh, bracing and so on. Now there's nothing special about this structure it's just been put together using standard uh, Revit tools but what I'm going to do now is actually transfer this to AutoCAD structural detailing now in previous releases you'd have found that the extensions were actually found on the add-ins tab now the add-ins tab is now reserved for third-party tools the extensions now have their own exclusive tab which you can see here so on the extensions ribbon you'll see we have AutoCAD structural detailing and we have a couple of options here we can basically link this to formwork drawings we can link it to our RC drawings if we want to, so we can detail, reinforce concrete beams, columns and so on. Or we can use the steel detailing link, and in here I'm going to be using steel detailing. So let's select this link. And the first uh, options we'll see here is we can, if we have ASD loaded on our machine, we can directly send this model to ASD. Or if we don't have it on our machine, we could actually generate a DWG file that we could pick up at a later date. But I already have this on my machine, so I'm going to uh, send this across. So first thing we'll see is hopefully the mapping dialog box. Basically what's happening here is we're able to map Revit sections to ASD sections. Now what I normally do here is click unmapped, and we can now see that that's blank, so in fact uh, ASD has actually mapped all of these sections. But it is actually just worth checking to see that the sections are mapping through correctly. So we'll go ahead and say OK there. Now this does actually take a few minutes to transfer through. It does help if you load up AutoCAD structural detailing in the background to save it having to um, load that up as well. So I already have ASD running. So it's just going through the various different sections it sees and then it's now putting across all of the various elements. Okay, so you can see that's now done, so let's now switch across to ISD. Here we are now in AutoCAD Structural Detailing. And the first thing you'll see here on the left hand side is um, the uh, browser here. Now, it's similar in functionality uh, to the Revit browser, it basically shows all the components that we have loaded in. If the inspector's not showing, you can use this icon here to show or hide the object inspector. So you'll see that it actually recognises columns and beams. So you can see we've got columns, beams and profile here. The profiles basically come in as default for, for things like bracing. So as an example here, if I modify this in ASD, you can see it's come across as a profile. You can set ASD up to actually recognise this as bracing. OK, so let's get going. We'll start by creating some basic connections. So all of our connections are actually found here. The first connection I'm going to use here is basically an M-plate beam to column flange. Um, you'd also find this in Revit actually now. So we'll start by picking the column and then the beam. All of these are macro driven. So here we can see uh, the macro that's loaded up. And basically we can go through and start to set all of our various different uh, settings in here. So we've got M-plates, various different stiffeners. So in here I'm actually going to put haunch underneath and instead of just using a, a flat plate in here we can actually use a profile and then select our profile that we want to use. If we want it to actually go and generate um, stiffener plates we can do that as well so I'm generating a stiffener at the bottom of the haunch and also uh, where the rafter comes in. Any rib details we want to set up we could do including holes and bolts here. Now if I go into settings Within the bolts, then you can see that we can specify a washer on the bolt head as well as on the back edge where the nut's meeting. If we want a locking nut, again, we can set that as well. And finally, any welds that we want to add in as well. Now, also, ISD can detect whether we're going to bolt this on site or whether we're actually going to do it in the um, fabrication yard. So you can see we've got two options there. So we're going to say it's site connected and it's bolted. So let's go ahead and apply that through. Okay, and now you can see ASD has generated that connection. What you'll notice in the object inspector is it actually adds these connections in and you can see we have the um, bolts that we're using in there as well. 
Now, again, you can show um, various different plates that we're loading as well by selecting these options across the top. So you can now see the various different stiffness and plates also shown in the object inspector. So let's move across now to the apex connection. So again here you can see we have uh, end plate apex. And we'll pick our two rafters. And again you can see this is macro driven. Similar to what we had before, I'm applying symmetry to the plates. Um, I'm applying um, uh, two haunches here as well. And again I'm using the same profile. Yep, we have our holes configured. So we'll go ahead and apply that as well. Now, of course, um, as we go through this, we're going to have potentially lots of connections to apply. A lot of them will be fairly similar. So what you can actually do is use the template option. So I'll show you this over on this uh, connection. So what I want to do here is just go ahead and use a rafter, connect, uh, rafter template that I've actually previously set up. So we'll just set our um, plate here and apply that. And you can see that's a much faster way of actually applying these structural connections. Okay, another thing we can do is actually look at uh, special connections where we might have uh, bracing. So underneath here you can see that I can deal with pipe connections. Uh, and maybe what I want to do here is use a, a, a pin connection with a pivot. So we can pick our main element and our secondary element like this. And any limitations, these are basically things that are going to be in the way. So this connection plate here. And again, you'll see it will load up the dialog box. Now, of course, we can come through and uh, again configure this just how we want to. So we'll go and, we'll go and generate a ceiling plate here. That's going to basically uh, plate up the end of the uh, CHS section. Any gussets that we want to put in, we can do. Um, here I'm just going to use a rectangular plate, but if I used Optimize, it would actually fit the area or fill the area there. And on the pivot side, again, we could say uh, what we're going to use here. I'm, I'm just going to use a standard bolt, and here it's set for an M24. Uh, let's go and choose an M20 there. And again, we'll go ahead and apply that. Okay, then you can now see that it's created that uh, connection. Now one of the things that's quite important to do with ASD, um, this used to be set by default but now it's not, is actually um, to allow you to select the connection if you ever want to come back and edit it. Now I'm just going to temporarily change the mode to a 2D wireframe. And what you'll actually see when you regenerate the part, uh, the structure here, just using normal regen, you'll see you have these white uh, circles. These are basically tools that you can use to actually select the uh, connection and go back and modify it. So if you ever want to make any changes to the connection, this is how you'd, you'd do it. As I say, by default they're not normally set, so you'd have to go into the main preferences of ASD in here, go into the steelwork, and you just want to make sure that you've got connection marks ticked. Okay, as I say, that used to be set, but now in 2012 they've, they've turned that off. Okay, let's get the shading back on. Okay, we'll just do one more connection before we start to generate some fabrication drawings. So you can see here we have a column uh, meeting the top of the rafter here. Now, certainly what I've found is that if the column is touching the rafter, then the, the automatic macros won't work. So what we can actually do is uh, shorten the members. So we'll just do that and we'll use a value here. 200 is fine. And what I'm going to do is just break these away. In fact, we'll just take it another 200 mil off. So the shorten and lengthen commands are very similar to what you'd use in CAD for lengthening and shortening lines. Okay, and we'll create our connection underneath there. So we've basically got an in-plate column to rafter. So we'll pick our column, select our beam, and again we have a very similar macro that we can start to go through and use. I'll just accept the defaults there. Okay, and you can now see there's our connection. Right, so how might we start to uh, generate drawings off this? Well, we've got a number of different options. What we can actually do, if we go to the positions uh, ribbon here, and we go to um, groups or families, you'll see that we uh, have a list of those. Now, before we're able to generate drawings, what we have to do is give each component a part number. Yeah, so it can actually identify each component in the drawing. So back on the model uh, area here, 
what I do here is select all instances so you can say select all right mouse click and then auto position so I'm just going to accept all the defaults here and get it to actually generate um, part numbers automatically what you can do though is you can come through and actually really decide on how it's going to number those up but as I say I'll just accept all the defaults for the moment and what you'll now see is each component has a unique position so now if I go to positions and we go underneath assemblies here you can now see straight away we start to uh, see better data so you can see here I've got the beams I've got the columns I've got the plates and so on okay so also if I go under groups here you can now see that it actually starts to group up all of the beams with the connection plates attached yeah so what we'll do just to get us going we'll create some automatic drawings of the first rafter so we'll go to automatic drawings and if we go to format and scales first thing we need to do here is actually make sure that we have all of our scales set up for what we're going to do so basically what this means is we're going to create one to ten views for the single profiles and also the plates and for assemblies we're going to run on one to twenty five so we're going to add in a template that we want to go and use here so I have some ISD templates set up so I'm going to choose an IU0 in this instance if we want a bomb or a bit of materials again we can actually add that through as well and you know, there's, there's numerous uh, builds of materials we can generate in ISD and we go ahead here and generate the automatic drawings now this is a really fast and productive process you can see that ISD is just racing through and generating all of these documents and if I go to now the sheet that it's generated so we're just going to B1 there very quickly you can see that ISD has been able to lay out all of the various fabrication drawings like this detail it all automatically including each part of course you might need to get in there and make changes to the, uh, the layout of the dimensions but you, I hope you see there that that's really quick and productive so just to take it a little bit further if we go back to the uh, model here what we're also able to do is start to group items together let's go through and actually select these so basically I'm just going to pick all the items I want to um, have in the group okay that will do us for the moment okay we should then better right mouse click and create a group from these now I'm going to just use a standard group here okay and I'll call this one frame Okay, and we'll align that to the UCS or WCS. So, what's that done? Well, if we go back to the positions now, and you can see I've got group uh, selected in here, then you'll see we have frame down below. So, what we're able to do here is attach document. Now, if I do that, I'm going to ask it here to generate an isometric view. So, we'll say a southwest isometric, or probably perhaps southeast will be better there. And you can see that it goes ahead and actually generates that document. Now, quite often we might want to actually change the way that that's been uh, laid out. So, if I went to change style in here, again I could decide on exactly how I was going to present that information. Another way to actually do that is um, actually to adjust the style, and this allows you to get in and maybe hide the hidden detail. So I don't really want to see invisible edges there, but I might want to see um, bolts and I might want to see parts in this. So we'll go ahead and actually apply that. Okay, now you can see I have all the information that I need there. And again, what I better do if I go back in here is I would better actually add this to the drawing so if we just select all these uh, views in the moment we'll just shift these across over there just to give me a little bit more space on the sheet like that okay and then here we can actually add this to the current printout um, as a block so we'll do that there place our block down okay so literally in just a few minutes you can see that we've been able to transfer a basic structure into ASD and just using some very simple macros and some drawing view commands we're able to put a good drawing together and you can see up here that ASD has generated that bit of materials and we're starting to get tonnages through as well for each component so very very useful okay hope that's been good for you